Welcome back to another video. And in today's video, we are gonna learn exactly how to design this 3D printable planner within Fusion 360. And with all that said, let's go ahead and jump right into it and get started. So the first thing we need to do here within Fusion 360 is we need to hover over to create, create new component, and then let's go ahead and name this to planter. Once that's done, press okay. From here, let's go ahead and create a sketch, then select the bottom plane, then from the origin, what we're gonna do is select center diameter circle. From the origin, drag this out. Let's set the distance here to 75 millimeters. Once that's done, let's press E on our keyboard to use the extrude command and set the distance to around 60 millimeters. Press okay. To do that, let's press S on our keyboard, which brings up the design shortcuts menu. And let's go ahead and type in plane. You'll be presented with a couple of different options, but the main option we're looking for here is tangent plane, which allows us to set up a plane on this cylinder here, since the cylinder doesn't have a flat surface. To do that, let's go ahead and select the face. Then this construction plane will pop up and press OK. From here, what we want to do is to create a sketch, then select the top face. And now what we're going to do is create some sketches so that way we can wrap this around our cylinder. The first sketch we're gonna make starts from the very center, or more specifically, the center down. And what we wanna do is to create a two-point rectangle. Now, just follow along as much as you can. And what I'm gonna do here is to create a sketch from the left-hand side all the way to the right. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna set the distance between these two lines by pressing D on our keyboard, select line one and line two, and then setting this to one millimeter. The next thing we're going to do here is repeat this process by creating another one from the very top to the right and repeating the exact same process by pressing D on our keyboard, selecting this line and this line, and then referencing this value here at the bottom. Press OK. Once that's done, let's go ahead and create our first pattern here. The first pattern we're going to create is the pattern here from the top going up. To start this, what I'm going to use is the control point spline tool. To use that tool, go ahead and press S on our keyboard, type in control point spline, and it should look like this. From here, let's go ahead and draw a line from the very bottom and just kind of create a curved line that goes all the way to the top. And don't worry if it's not perfect, we can always adjust these points as we go along. So if you're not happy with the way it looks, just go ahead and move this around, kind of get that curved look that you want to aim for with this design. And once you find a desired look, let's move on to the next step. The next thing we're gonna do here is press O on our keyboard, then select this line, and let's go ahead and move this to the side where this line overlaps the rectangle we have here. And what I'm looking for is that we create a closed profile by using the sketch we have here at the bottom. I'm gonna set the distance here to negative one and press okay. From here, let's go ahead and close off this profile, pressing L on our keyboard, closing off these two dots. And now we have a completed look for our sketch. To emboss this, what we're gonna do is press S, type in emboss, and then we're gonna select that sketch profile we selected or created here. The next thing we need to do here is hover over to the faces menu here or the faces option here in the dialog box here, click select, then select the face, and then make sure the depth is set to negative 0.5 and the effect set to deboss. Once that's done, press OK. From here on the left-hand side, we can go ahead and toggle on our component, then toggle on sketches, and turn off sketch two. And as you can see, we've created the very first emboss or deboss for our design here. To wrap this pattern all around our design, we're gonna press S on our keyboard, type in circular pattern, then the dialog box will show up here on the right-hand side. What we want is to select the type to circular pattern the object type set to features, the objects will be selected within the timeline down below, which is the recent feature. And then the axis we're gonna select is the ring that goes around the cylinder. Once that's done, go ahead and adjust the quantity to whatever quantity you want. And I'm gonna set the compute type to optimized. Press okay. Once that's done, Fusion might take a while depending on how fast your computer is. But once that's finished, we pretty much have a fleshed out design here. The next step in this process is to add a fillet at the very top. 
Now, as you can see, we actually worked our way backwards. We actually need to add the fillet before this. Now, the reason why we did this is that I want to show you that you can also go back within your timeline and add new additional features without having to delete any sort of features here within your timeline. To do that, we can go over to our timeline and drag this small cursor shown here at the bottom. We can drag this back by about two. And then what we can do is press F on our keyboard, which brings up the fillet option here. From here, let's go ahead and fillet this in to just about five millimeters or whatever desired look you prefer and press OK. Now, if we move this one step forward, you can see our emboss feature is not fully wrapped around the fillet that's shown here. And don't worry, we can fix that. To do that, you're gonna go ahead and click on emboss here at the bottom left-hand side. And then it's gonna pop up that dialog box once again. Now, the main thing you wanna do is hop over to faces. And then what we're gonna do is also select the top face here. Now, if you were to try to hover over this, it would not work. You actually need to hold command on your keyboard and then select the top face here, which adds the face to the faces feature here. Now our emboss is wrapping around the top of this fillet here. And if we can go ahead and circular pattern this by moving this step one step, Fusion 360 will go ahead and add those changes. And as you can see, there's a small warning. To fix that, we can go ahead and double click on the icon here. Then just go ahead and fix the warning by reselecting the axis. It would be the top one here and press OK. Now, the reason why we did this is because I wanted to show you that you can add new and additional features to your product or your model without having to go back within your timeline or delete any steps. Truthfully, once you know how to utilize this feature, Fusion 360 becomes much more powerful and you don't have to start from scratch when you make a mistake. The next thing we need to do here is to finish this off by creating the pattern here at the very bottom. To do that, let's hover over to Sketch 2, then double click on that. And now what we're gonna do is go ahead and create the design pattern for the bottom here. To do that, what we're gonna do is press L on our keyboard, then from the origin, dragging it up, and what we want to do is start from the very bottom left here and just create a line going to the very top. From here, let's go ahead and dimension this by pressing D on our keyboard, then selecting this line and this line here, and let's set this to 125. Next, let's go ahead and press L on our keyboard, create another line to the very top. Then let's select the parallel feature within the sketch menu here and then select this line and this line here. So that way these lines are parallel. From here, let's press D on our keyboard, select this line and this line, and let's go ahead and set this to one millimeter. From here, let's go ahead and repeat the exact same process by pressing L on our keyboard, selecting this edge here, dragging this out, and then let's go ahead and set the angle to the exact same angle shown here. To do that, press D on your keyboard, Select this line and this line here, and let's set this to 125 or reference to 125 we've shown there. Let's repeat the exact same process by pressing L once again, selecting this line all the way to the bottom. Let's go ahead and set this to make sure they're parallel. And if they're already parallel, it's gonna show a constraint feature on the right-hand side. If they're not, it's gonna show up with this small icon so that way they're parallel. Let's finish this off by dimensioning the lines by pressing D, selecting the lines, and then let's go ahead and set this to one millimeter. From here, let's go ahead and press S on our keyboard, type in emboss, select emboss. Then we're gonna select these two sketch profiles shown here, and then select the face, which is gonna be the cylinder we have here. Set the effect to deboss, set the depth to 0.5 and press OK. Now, as you can see, Fusion has shown up with some sort of error. Let's double click on the emboss feature here and let's go ahead and reselect the face and repeat the pattern once again. If it didn't show an error for you, then you're pretty much set. You should have a design that looks like this. And what we wanna do is wrap this around our cylinder here. To do that, we can press S on our keyboard, type in circular pattern, and then we're gonna select the last feature within Fusion 360, select the axis, select this edge here, and then we can go ahead and set the quantity to whatever quantity you want. I'm gonna set this to 60 and set the compute type to optimize. 
This might take a minute for Fusion to load, so I'll go ahead and press OK and let it do its thing. And as you can see, Fusion 360 has created this sort of pattern or knurling effect onto my design. And what we can do now is add a fillet at the very bottom by double clicking on fillet and then selecting by the edge here by holding command and then selecting the edge. And now both top and bottom are filleted in. Press OK. Now the reason why we did this is because I want you guys to understand that you can also use the timeline features here to actually go back in time and add new and additional features. Get used to this timeline here as this is going to be incredibly important as you start designing your own models. Now with all that said, all that is left to do is to create the opening or the gap to place stuff inside here. To do that, let's hover over to create sketch, select the top face, then let's go ahead and create a center diameter circle from the center, drag this out, and I'm just gonna match it to the width or the diameter of this entire thing here. Then what we're gonna do is just highlight the entire thing by selecting our mouse or cursor from the left, clicking, and then just dragging it over. So that way we can select this entire profile here. Then pressing E on our keyboard, we can go ahead and just drag down this arrow and I'm gonna drag this down to around negative 59. Press okay. Once that's done, let's go ahead and turn off sketch three and sketch two. And as you can see, we have this luxury sort of planter with a minimalist, but also a very unique and classy look and pattern added to it. To add some colors to this design, you can press A on your keyboard. Then we can also search up the color red, search for red, I'm gonna go with this matte red finish here. And what we can do now is start using the render environment within Fusion. To use that, we're gonna go over to design, then click on render. Now rendering your products is a great way to see what your products will visually look like when you 3D print them. Keep in mind, rendering is not gonna be always as accurate as in real life. So feel free to make adjustments and changes to, to match it however you want it to look like. From here, if we were to hover over to in canvas render and just render this here, Fusion 360 will go ahead and render this to its best of its abilities. And on the right hand side, you'll be presented with the amount of time that has elapsed to render this item and as well as the level of quantity that you want for this item here. With all that said and done, let's go ahead and go back to design. To do that, let's go ahead and click on bodies. Then right click on body one, save as mesh. And let's go ahead and export this to our slicer. And as you can see, this print is going to take us about two hours and 48 minutes to print, and we'll still be able to capture all those details. Now, keep in mind, this was embossed or debossed with a 0.5 millimeters, so you should be fine with no supports. But as you can see, it still captures a lot of the details within our print, which is not only really cool, but also adds this sort of knurling pattern that goes or wraps around the cylinder here. Feel free to print this out and let me know what you guys like about it. So with that said, that pretty much wraps up today's tutorial. Let me know your guys' thoughts and opinions down below in the comment section of this video. And if you guys like this video and want to get more content just like this, and or if you wanna improve your skill set around designing products and 3D modeling, join the 14 day challenge down below in the description of this video. This challenge is available for anyone to join and this will push you to help you learn how to create your own models for 3D printing. But with that said, thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.